Robertson's own life was not exactly happy. In fact, he was quite depressed for much of his life. And maybe he was depressed because he ended up being a clergyman when what he wanted to do was be a soldier like his dad, who was a captain under the Duke of Wellington, and his five brothers, who were all officers in the British military. But when Robertson applied for a commission, it was turned down. Nobody knows why, but it was turned down. The second time he applied, it was accepted. But by that time, he was already enrolled in Oxford University. And because he, you needed a sponsor in those days to go to Oxford. And because he had a sponsor and was already there, he decided to just continue on that path. Now, at that time, if a person went to Oxford, only men went, of course. If you went to Oxford University, you were headed for one of two careers. You would either become a diplomat in the government or you would become a cleric. And so Robertson became a cleric. But as I mentioned, he suffered depression and maybe because of several crises of faith. So the first one occurred on his first assignment. He was the assistant pastor at Winchester. And by the end of the year, he was so depressed, he took a leave of absence and he hiked through the Tyrolean Alps for a year to overcome his depression. When he got back to England, they gave him another assignment. He was there for a couple years, and once again, he went through a crisis of faith. He said he didn't even know if he believed in God, and so he took a leave of absence, and he hiked through the Tyrolean Alps again for a number of months by himself. He just had a horse and a, a guide, and he did his own hunting for food. And at the end of that time, he had resolved his crisis, but he did not believe in many of the doctrines of the Anglican Church. However, he did believe in God. He became a deeply committed Christian. Now, he didn't live very long because after that second assignment, which was in Cheltenham for five years, he went to Brighton. And he was only in Brighton for five years when he died at the young age of 37. By that time, however, he had made friends among every class of people from the poorest to the wealthiest. He, in fact, one of his greatest claims to fame is that he started what's called the Working Man's Institute. Now, he wasn't the inventor of the idea, but he started one in Brighton. And when he gave his opening speech, 3,000 people joined. And what they did was collect a penny a week in dues and built libraries. And these libraries were free. And he sponsored uh, educational events. He would bring in speakers, famous people, who had invented things, and they would teach these people how to run the machinery and how to improve themselves and move up from being farmers to being middle class people. There was no middle class before Robertson's day. And he was one of the few people who really helped the poor rise up into a better way of living by adjusting to the inventions and changes brought by the Industrial Revolution. And at that time, people were quite afraid. The queen at that time, Queen Adelaide, was actually afraid that her life was going to end the way Marie Antoinette had ended with the guillotine because the British truly feared that the revolution that had just occurred in France, the French Revolution, was about to occur in England. And that explains why when Robertson died, they closed the city, they closed all the shops, they had this huge procession, there were many carriages, there were many people, working class organizations that followed behind his coffin to the gravesite. It was a three mile procession from his home in Brighton to the extramural cemetery. And that's in brief the story of Robertson's life.